Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today you're in for a treat. We're going to do a Shimano uh, 3000 Sustain, uh, the 3000 FG. Nice, real, high quality. It retails for over $100. It's packed full of bearings and moving parts and uh, crazy stuff. And I'm going to do two things with this. I'm going to show you how to tune this reel up. I'll also show you what's going on inside because it's a different uh, mechanism that drives the, um, the spool shaft up and down. It's a worm gear as opposed to uh, the more traditional cross wind gears and that. So stick around. Take a, take, uh, take a moment to view this video and see what, uh, what this reel is all about. And if you have one, see how to maintain it. But before I get started, I want to let you know it does require a special uh, tool. Not that special, but it's not something that all of us have in our kit bag. And that is you need a very small, I believe it's a .9 uh, metric hex uh, Allen wrench. So uh, if you don't have one of them, you can kind of work around it, but uh, you really do need that in order to get to the uh, access to the one bearing. And... Uh, Interestingly enough, they're kind of available. For those of you that um, have access to uh, uh, a, a store in the U.S. called Harbor Freight, uh, kind of a surplus tool uh, seller, uh, they do sell a kit. Um, Pittsburgh Tools has a lot of small uh, uh, Phillips heads, regular screwdrivers, some Torx, as well as the Allen. And that's where I was able to find this piece. But uh, if you don't have that, you're going to run into a little bit of trouble with uh, getting this reel apart and, and getting it serviced properly. So we're going to take off the, the spool first. That's simply uh, reversing the, the drag knob. And during this, I'll show you how to service all of the bearings. I'll give you a look at the inside of this. I'll give you a look at how to take this reel apart, <clears throat> what makes it work. And, uh, and show you some of the, uh, the fun things with this. So, um, okay, so I took the spool off. I'm going to take the handle off next. And to gain access to the, uh, the bearings underneath here, you need uh, to do a couple of things. And one of them actually is to take the rotor assembly off. And that's where, uh, where it's difficult to play uh, taking this off unless you have that tool. So here's what I was talking about, uh, you know, uh, the, um, an Allen wrench typically will come in just the uh, the L-shaped uh, one, and if you have one of those, it's fine. Like I said, this one uh, actually came from uh, Harbor Freight. Maybe you can even find them online. But there's a stop screw in here. So in order to get the rotor off, you need to pull the rotor off of the uh, spool shaft, and you can't get off of the spool shaft without removing this bearing mechanism here. So there's a set screw in here. A very small set screw, but it's there nonetheless, sitting on top of the uh, uh, the bearing clamp. So, first thing you do is you take off the two uh, stop screw washers that sit on that spool. I call it a stop screw washer that sits on top of the stop uh, spool mechanism. Then you can have access to the mechanism, and hopefully this is clear enough here. You can see that I'm going to remove the set screw. And you heard it right, I'm not backing it off. I have to remove it completely because this set screw sits into the shaft itself. So you can't back it off and think that you'll get a free play on that uh, um, collar. You won't, it has to come out completely. You'll notice that I'm using a parts basket. Boy, you better have something close by with all the little parts in this. Once you get that off, you can remove the, uh, the top uh, bearing assembly, you can see where that set screw sits on the uh, on the post now that it's off. And make uh, make mental note of how these things line up. Uh, in case you're not familiar with it, here's that bearing that we're going to go lubricate. Um, here's the, the collar piece behind for the click. Uh, they all sit on top of each other. I'm going to leave them right in there in that parts cabinet for now because I'm not getting there yet. If you have any questions about how this works, there's no shame in going to the uh, the playbook. And here's an example. I got this online. It happens to be the Shimano Sustain that I'm working on. And it's an exploded view of the parts. Uh, also, if you needed to rem uh, order rem 
renewal parts, there's a line there for that as well. So I just go online, do a search for Shimano schematics, and you'll be able to find that. And I also always recommend when you're taking these apart, if you're not familiar with the reel, and I'm somewhat unfamiliar with this reel, take pictures along the way. Take your cell phone or take a, uh, uh, a camera and take pictures as you go through the steps so that you know where those pieces and parts came from. Okay, so now I'm going to take the rotor off. Uh, you remove the nut back. It's a backwards threaded nut. It, uh, it, instead of normally uh, being backed off counterclockwise, it's backed off clockwise. All right, now we'll get to the anti-reverse assembly. And uh, now we're getting down into the case, which is what we're trying to get off of here. There is a friction strip on this one that needs to be removed. It's a little rubber, kind of rubber bandish kind of a thing that uh, needs to come off to give you the access to the side plate screws. So I just use a, uh, a little screwdriver here. And typically it, uh, it gets wedged in over here where there's a ramp for the, um, the spool release uh, trip lever. So you have to just be careful with this one, but you can walk it up the spool and you can get that off. It just takes a moment. Uh, make sure you have it done properly because there is a little bit of a, uh, a groove uh, piece that it sits in here. Okay, we're working our way through. Uh, I like the the uh, comment somebody once made to repair a reel, you need a good screwdriver, uh, a good pair of pliers, patience, and I like the last one that they always tell me about, and a sense of humor. Uh, and sometimes you got to laugh at the way that some of these reels were designed or used or, or what have you. Okay, so now I've got that up and over. And for this, uh, this service, I'm not going to touch the anti-reverse bearing, so I'm just going to leave that... Uh, that piece there, but it can uh, it can be worked off completely. Now you'll see that there's three screws. There's actually another one coming under here, and uh, you need a smaller uh, Phillips head to remove this set screw. And then they hide one in the handle, so they really do work you on this one. There is a handle set screw here that also is part of the bump guard, and you need to take that one off and out in order to. Uh, to get this right and again that's why you're seeing that I'm putting them in the parts basket because there's quite a few of them here and uh, you don't want to lose any of these parts okay so that should take the bump guard off which it does that gives us access to the the four screws those are Phillips head or you can actually use a small flat bladed screwdriver with these Sometimes one works better than the other, so I'm going to, to remove those. With the Phillips head, it seems to be working a little bit better here. And if I remember on this one, there's three of one size, and the, and the one in the back here is a smaller one. We're just going to lay them out here for a moment before I put them in the parts basket, just to make sure. Yeah, this is a nice reel, and uh, it almost uses a... Uh, a winding gear very similar to what you would see on a level line uh, conventional reel. It, it uses a pawl assembly with a worm. Yeah, okay, so uh, that was just a mental note here, but there is a smaller screw in that set, and the smaller screw uh, sits towards the back there. Okay, uh, also if you're familiar with this, you don't need to take all of this apart to do general lubrication. There is a screw that's on the side plate here that can be removed just to add some oil. So uh, before I knock these screws anywhere, they're going to go in my part basket as well. And now that side plate assembly should come off. Now this is an interesting one because the handle and the side plate are on the one side with the ramp. And now you can see underneath. So we have a bearing we're going to lubricate that sits on the main drive. The main drive should simply slip out. And then here is the uh, the drive assembly that we were talking about. You have guide posts on both sides. You have a pawl assembly here. If you needed to replace the pawl, you could pull the uh, the screw out of this. There's a worm gear in the back, which those of you that have the level line fishing reels uh, are familiar with. 
here's your drive gear up top here, your, your post shaft, and underneath here is, is another burn. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to play around uh, for the purpose of this on that anti-reverse gear. It looks clean. If you needed to remove the anti-reverse gear, there's the three, uh, three nuts up there to do it. I'm simply going to, to oil that from the back because that's where that bottom gear sits. I'm going to go for some blue grease. In this case, I use a, a pen reels uh, grease, but there's other manufacturers that use the uh, real grease out there. Just going to put a little bit of grease on that worm shaft and on the main drive shaft there. Then I oil burring, so there's a burring in the back here. We're going to go oil that. Again, you have access from the other side on the outside of the reel for this burring. I'm going to reassemble the main drive gear. I'm going to oil the burring that was on top here. And just a, a drop of oil on the pole assembly down here. And then I'm going to reinstall the side plate. So that side plate has a, <coughs> a ramp for the, um, the trip switch. Make sure that the ramp uh, seats properly as, as you go up on that. And we're going to go put this right back together again since uh, we can remember where we were with those. And uh, there was three long screws. the side plates. Now you can use a mechanical screwdriver. People ask me that all the time. Uh, I, I, I am careful with mechanical screwdrivers because they have a high torque uh, and if you're not watching it you can either strip the screw or you can uh, break the case if you over tighten it. So something like this I just as soon use the uh, the manual screwdriver but if you're uh, if you're lacking dexterity or anything else uh, issues with your hands perhaps arthritis or something and the only option you have is to use the mechanical screwdriver go ahead and do that but uh, just be aware that as you're doing that uh, when you're getting down towards the uh, the final turns back off the uh, the torque on that or uh, better yet just uh, switch over to your uh, your your uh, manual drive to finish that. Okay, so the four of these are back on and now I'm reversing the process for how we took this bottom half of the reel apart. The next up is going to be the uh, bump guard. Remember we had the two pieces on this. It inserts into the handle and it inserts into the, the uh, main frame here. The small screw goes on the back here with the small screwdriver. And we add the, the longer thin screw. It goes through the handle. Again, small screwdriver. So I guess uh, when Shimano was doing this, they just wanted to make life uh, interesting for all of us with the smaller tools here. All right, and this, uh, this side will just go back on here. And now we can service the top of the reel. Okay, so we pulled off the bearing assembly here. This is a bearing and a click assembly. It has a, a washer that sits on top of the rotor. I guess we can go put the rotor on at this point. You want to just check for dirt if, if this one's in good condition. You want to check for dirt. You could put a drop of oil where the uh, the bail assembly clicks. We want to reinstall this. That's done by lining that up, and then we're going to. Now remember, this threads backwards. It's kind of odd, but uh, some manufacturers thread them backwards, just like. Uh, and show my age now, the old Chryslers used to thread their uh, one side drive wheels backwards. Okay, and then we're going to put the click me mechanism on. <clears throat> if you weren't following along, there was a small washer that went on top of that. Now we have the bearing assembly, so we're going to make sure that we lubricate that bearing. And again, I use oil on bearings. And when we put this back on, now we have to align the hole the hole in the reel 
and uh, I'll show you that with a pin because <clears throat> it's difficult to see but there's a hole inside the shaft that we showed you earlier that's going to accept <clears throat> the, the set screw that set screw is not an easy thing to get out it's more difficult to put in I like to put it onto the Allen wrench first to kind of give you a little bit more uh, leeway there and we can assemble it into the hole tighten that up and what we've done now is we've lubricated the main bearings in this reel and then there's the two uh, set washers that go on top of that and then we'll move our attention over to the spool. The spool has got one more set of uh, washers in there. They're felt drag washers also I'll show you how that assembly works. Uh, this is just a nice smooth reel. I like these reels a lot. You can you can just see how smooth that's operating. Alright and then we'll just come over here. Now this drag set is pretty much the same as a standard drag set. It has a clip that works inside there. Uh, you want to pull that clip out and as many of you know it's a spring so you don't want to shoot the spring so keep your finger in there as you're pulling it out of the groove because if it shoots then you're going to be spending an awful lot of work time trying to find that thing somewhere and as I'm speaking it just shot so there you go all right back into the parts bucket that leaves access to our drag stack now I like to push it through from the other side this one has got felt washers in it as drags. I didn't get the whole piece out anyway. Right, let's do it this way. This is your first felt washer. All right, there we go. So we have a felt washer below we have a mechanism that holds another felt washer on top and then we have the final felt washer so these are oiled they're not uh, they're not greased so just uh, and these are in pretty good condition as I'm looking at them right now so just make sure that as you uh, you examine them that you get rid of any dirt I'm putting back the, uh, that holding clip next felt washer so there's a couple of uh, manufacturers out there that do use these oil felt washer drags uh, Pen Fierce is another one that uses that. Pen Fierce and Pen Pursuit have felt washers that are oiled. Uh, they're not as rigid. Uh, sometimes people will tell you uh, you need Carbon X uh, washers or whatever. Uh, you know, I think at a 3000 series uh, reel, <clears throat> you're not fighting that 60 or 70 pound fish. Uh, you, you really don't need those, uh, those others. This is uh, more for bassing and uh, trout and the like. Um, and then the third felt washer went in, which I just oiled. The cap goes in on top of that. Just make sure it's all seated properly. I apologize if you can't see that, but it does get seated in properly there. And then we go back to that spring clip that we had, which rides in a ridge here. And make sure that it's all pressed down. Again, I got my finger in there so it doesn't shoot. And then you can see it's all back the way it normally came. We're going to go grab that uh, reel. Put the drag on. And there it is. We've, we've lubed all of the, uh, the bearings on this reel. We've cleaned it up. We've examined it for any broken parts. There are none. That is a sweet reel and it's ready to go fishing again. So I hope this has uh, helped you see the, uh, the reel. Uh, get a little bit of a look on the inside. If you're maintaining it, show you a little trick with that, uh, that you need that small piece for the set screw to make this thing work. Uh, if you're thinking about buying one, this is a high quality reel with a lot of ball bearings that you saw that were uh, done there. And a little bit of a unique and high quality um, uh, shaft uh, drive, which is the worm gear in Nepal as opposed to the crosswind gear. So, uh, hope you've enjoyed this. If you liked it, uh, please like it uh, on the uh, YouTube page. If you want to see more of these, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I've uh, opened up my workshop and everything that comes in, I'm pretty much uh, doing a video on and uh, showing and sharing my experience with you. So, thank you for viewing the video. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.